for the Colts. Manning needs help. They need to get people healthy. That's not really working out, at least this week. They're still without Joseph Adai and others. Dallas Clark on IR. Exploit the Cowboys secondary, and for Dallas, obviously, control those defensive ends. Mathis and Freeney. Cowboys will start with a ball. Brian McCann, who's been bothered by a bad ankle, who's been a home run hitter for the Dallas Cowboys, takes a knee and. Here we go with John Kitna headed out to the field his sixth consecutive start taking the place of the injured Tony Romo. There are the backs and receivers and Troy the offensive line for Dallas over the last few weeks has played better. Well they have gotten better and that's uh, that's certainly something that was very much needed. I don't know how much that says it's an offensive line that for much of this year has been very inconsistent. Kitten has put up good numbers. Coming off of another 300 yard day against the Saints on Thanksgiving and here's Felix Jones who carries it for six over the left side Aaron Francisco made the stop he is part of the defense on the back end at strong safety here's what they do up front and they don't blitz a lot primarily Troy because they can get pressure with that front four. Well it's imperative for Indianapolis if they're going to be able to play the style of defense that they want to play those two outside pass rushers Robert Mathis Dwight Franey they've got to be a disruptive force in that backfield. Second down and four and they keep it on the ground Felix Jones again and Felix is out to the 30 depends on the spot. You know the weird thing that's happened for the Dallas Cowboys is even though Jason Garrett took over as interim head coach he's been the offensive coordinator here since 07 and earlier in the year with a healthy Tony Romo and then even the early part with Jason with John Kidna they weren't running the ball as much and now there's been more of an emphasis on that ground game. Boy there has been more of an emphasis there they've been as balanced as you can get between run and pass 50 percent run here over the last three games since Jason Garrett became the head coach and averaging over 30 points per game. Here's more for Felix and Jones out of the backfield takes it for six. Cavell Connor made the stop for the Colts. Now you talked about John Kidna and, and how he has played Joe the last two games he's completed over 70 percent of his passes. This offense. While just while Kitna has been the quarterback has somewhat been feast or famine. You know, of the five starts coming into this game, three of those, this offense went for over 400 yards. The other two, under 300 yards of offense. On second down and four, here's Choice. Finally getting a chance, and Tashard Choice carries it for eight and a first down. He had only 14 carries all season coming in. A guy who's in his third year and who had 92 carries in 08, 64 last year, and lately he's been wondering why he's been left out of the mix. I think everybody's been kind of wondering. He has not had double digit carries since October of last year. When he's been given his opportunities, he's really been pretty productive. On first down, Kitna backs up, fires it, sideline Bryant, the rookie. And a nice catch for Des Bryant. 14 yards Gerard Powers on the coverage for Indy. Well how about that Thanksgiving game last Thursday when Des Bryant went without a reception. Oh. You know did he have control. It looked like it was questionable Joe as to whether or not he actually had maintained possession before going out of bounds. The ball was moving on his way to the sideline. We'll take another look at it here. Good route by Des Bryant but the ball moves right there. So sure I wouldn't challenge that if I was Jim Caldwell. Yeah, even though the Cowboys are slow to get the next play off, there is no challenge. And on first down, here's Roy Williams making the catch in front of Jacob Lacey, who makes the start in place of the injured Kelvin Hayden, who's now on that long list of injured players for Indianapolis. He's out with a bad neck. Now you go back to Des Bryant three weeks ago in his game against the New York Giants, had his first hundred yard game receiving. He followed that up against Detroit with just eight yards receiving and then as I was saying last week against the Saints on Thanksgiving he didn't even have a catch in that one. Only eight yards over the last two weeks. He eclipsed that with his first catch in this game. Good opening drive by the Cowboys and a delayed handoff to Felix Jones trying to get to the edge and this time well played by the Colts defensively. 
Antoine Bethay out there to make the stop. So while we talk about the Cowboys offense, you look at the Indianapolis defense, they're 17th overall, but while the offense has taken it on the chin here lately for the Colts, the defense has been just as bad. They cannot stop the run. Yeah, this is a defense that has struggled throughout the season stopping people running the ball, but they're probably coming off of their best defensive effort last week in that loss to the San Diego Chargers. Play action and now a screen set up for Bennett. Gets a block. Martellus Bennett has another Dallas first down. Bethay on the stop, a gain of 11, and a methodical march down the field by the Cowboys in the opening possession. Yeah, Jason Garrett doing a good job of mixing things up on this possession. They wanted to run the ball right at the Indianapolis Colts. They've mixed up some intermediate passes. We saw the one along the sideline to Des Bryant. They come back with the screen passes. There's probably not a defense in football that sees more screen passes in these Colts because of that outside pressure with their edge rushers. Already five first downs picked up by the Cowboys. Here's a toss to Choice. Welcome back to Shard Choice. Touchdown. Talk about making the most of an opportunity here for the three and eight Dallas Cowboys. 20 yards and a touchdown for Choice, his second of the year. Well, Keonta Dawson, the defensive end, he gets caught peeking in the backfield, and it's just enough to get Tashard Choice out on the edge. And then Jason Witten, he then secures the outside defender there. As you see, Gerard Powers gets blocked by J Jason Witten. And a nice run there by Tashard Choice. That was his longest run of the season. 20 yards and a touchdown. Nine play drive covering 80 yards. The last 20 of it right here. Tashard Choice getting a chance. 7 0 Cowboys early. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Well, that wasn't so good for the Indianapolis Colts, was it? Very good for the Cowboys. Opening possession, nine plays, 80 yards, 445 off the clock, and they made it look easy. Now we'll have the pleasure of watching Peyton Manning go to work and do his thing. Beeler gets into one. Tryon waiting for it, and he'll take it out. Justin Tryon out to the 25. So we know what happened for one offense. Deshard Choice made some moves and took it in. And now it's number 18, ready to go for the Colts down seven. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Well, no quarterback around the NFL's thrown in more than Peyton Manning. Question is, who is he throwing it to? Lately, it's been a lot of the other team. And this time he throws for his tight end, Jacob Tammy. And so if he's not throwing it to the other team with seven interceptions over the last two games, he's had to make do with the guys he's got on the outside and a tight end because of injury. I like that to talk about what a down year this is for Peyton Manning. 22 touchdowns and 11 interceptions in a down year. Here is Tammy who makes the catch. He's been busy. More catches at the tight end spot. Than anybody across the NFL over the last five weeks. That's good for eight, third, and two coming up. Yeah, they're fortunate to have Tammy because they lost one of their biggest weapons in Dallas Clark. And Tammy coming into this season with just six career receptions in his first two seasons. Nobody was real sure what he would be able to do in a real game. They saw him playing well in practice. He's been exceptional. Third down and two, empty backfield, and that's Garcon for the first down. Pierre made the catch good for seven game break. Here's Kurt. A trouble start for the Chargers against the Raiders. Darren Spohl muffed a punt. Jason Campbell and Oakland turned it into a touchdown. That made it seven nothing. And Philip Rivers just threw an interception. So Oakland marching for more. Joe Troy and Pan. Punting game was a killer the first time in the meeting between the Chargers and the Raiders. A game the Raiders won. off to Donald Brown and Donald in his second year out of UConn first round pick last year carries it for two 
And while we look at the backs and receivers, it's Brown running. It will see a lot of Javaris James because of the injury to Joseph Adai. Yeah, and then we've got Mike Pollock. He's getting the, the start today there at right guard. And he came into the season as the starter, lost his job because of performance, but that's been a position they've just not been able to solidify. Second and eight. Here's one aired out for Reggie Wayne. What a throw, and it's picked off. Ripped away by Allen Ball. And that is the eighth takeaway by this Dallas defense over the last three plus games. Good throw right in the hands of Reggie Wayne, but Allen Ball swoops in for the pick, his second of the year. Today's game is sponsored by Little Fockers in theaters December 22nd. By Pizza Hut, your favorite plays deserve your favorite pizza, your favorites, your Pizza Hut. And by Sprint. The Now Network. Well, another interception thrown by Peyton Manning, his eighth over the last three games, and that was the first possession by the Colts. That ties a career high for a three game span for Peyton Manning, and now the Cowboys up seven, take over at their 16. We're not hardly slowed down the first time, and here's Felix Jones. Picking up 11, but they on the stop back to the interception. You can see Allen Ball, the free safety. He goes to the middle. Peyton then knows that he's got single coverage on the outside. The problem is Reggie Wayne gets jammed inside the numbers. And so Allen Ball just didn't have much ground that he had to cover. Any safety in the National Football League should be able to make that play. An easy pick by Allen Ball and a really bad decision on Peyton Manning's part. Here is Felix Jones. He's been busy. He carries it for two. Moala with the stop. Well, the Jacksonville Jaguars have already won today. They started the football Sunday tied with the Colts on top in the AFC South. The Jaguars and the Colts will meet here in two weeks. Jaguars won the first meeting with Indianapolis. Second and eight. Over the middle. Pass is caught. Miles Austin. And Austin is inside Indianapolis territory for 22. You know, the whole key for anybody playing the Colts, as I, as I talked about, is you got to control these outside pass rushers. The Cowboys put Martellus Bennett out to give Doug Free some help, widen the edge, and then you're able to get the ball down the field to Miles Austin. This is a defense that although they've been good in pass defense, it's all predicated by a pressure by those defensive ends. They don't get that. I don't think the secondary can hold up. Here is an end around Miles Austin who had a 60 yard touchdown run on Thanksgiving carries it forward for five yards. Keontae Dawson on the stop. That's now 13 snaps. Eight first downs picked up by the Dallas Cowboys so far offensively. You know, last week's game against the Chargers who have had success against the Colts. One of the reasons why they have had success in recent years is they do a good job. Their tackles offensively of blocking Mathis and Freeney. The Cowboys tackles I don't think they can hold up one on one. But we're going to continue to see them get help like we saw with Martellus Bennett. Here is more from Felix Jones. He's got another Dallas first down. That's nine. On the Cowboys we know that the Colts like to run an up tempo offense. We've seen Dallas here on these first two possessions. They're doing a good job of getting in and out of the huddle and trying to dictate tempo a little bit as well. Felix Jones has already touched it seven times. He checks out. Deshard Choice is in. On first down. Here's Choice, cuts it back. And a nice play made by Powers to save a bigger run. It was good for four. You know, coming into this game, Joe, I was going to say that if you're a fan of just good old fashioned smash mouth football, this probably isn't going to be like are real good at running the ball. Dallas has gotten a little better here in recent weeks. Boy, looking at this. The first two possessions here by Dallas, they're, they're doing a nice job of really continuing to mix it up as they have in recent weeks. But then also having some success with the running game to go with it. Here is a snap, and this has happened far too often for the Dallas Cowboys. Center exchange with a quarterback, and 
They couldn't make the clean connection. No, Andre Girard, he, he's got a reach block, and so when you've got a center who's trying to reach like he was on that last play, the quarterback really has to ride him all the way. You see how Andre Girard has to, he has a very difficult block, and as a quarterback, you got to know that because just by that very nature, the ball's going to come up a little shorter than it normally would. Third down and five. Inside handoff choice. More trouble for Indianapolis. Cannot stop the run. But they on the tackle, a gain of 11. And when we talked to Hudson Houck, the longtime offensive line coach for the Dallas Cowboys, among other stops, he said since Jason Garrett took over and now we put on pads on Wednesdays, it has helped us get in a groove. It's helped us with the run game. And it's helped us cover up some of the deficiencies we have on the offensive line. There's a lot of coaches out there, Joe, that don't believe you should put these professionals in pads during the week. I disagree. I think teams lose their toughness and their physicalness when they don't get in pads every now and then during the weeks. Here is Witten with his first catch. And Jason Witten is upended by Lacey after a gain of four. You go back to the start now that Tashar Choice has had and I know we had several of his games. In fact, we had his first start as a rookie there against the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's, that's a little bit of a daunting task for a rookie to have to make his first start against that group. And yet, he did a nice job. 88 yards rushing in that game. And whenever he's had double digit carries, he's done a heck of a job running the football. So now inside the red zone, here's Felix Jones. And he's brought down after a gain of four. So a short third down. Third and two coming up for the Dallas Cowboys who were one defensive play made by Malcolm Jenkins on Thanksgiving ripping the ball away from Roy Williams of being three and oh under Jason Garrett and they're rolling here early at Indianapolis. Taken defensively by the Colts. Third down and two when we come back for Dallas already up 7 0. What an opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys already up 7 0. Got an interception from Allen Ball, and now here they are, third and two. Choice gets it and he is flipped. Good play made by Gary Brackett who's back after missing three straight games with a toe injury it's fourth down. Yeah that really was a nice play there by Gary Brackett coming in. You're going to see him come just to the left of the sharp choice right there. He gets he's able to come underneath Leonard Davis who was pulling and then get the hit on to sharp joy to sharp choice in the backfield. 30 yard try coming from Beeler, who is getting better as the season is worn on. He really struggled early. Got a big leg. And he drills this to make it 10 0. Good start for Dallas. The hole a little deeper for Peyton Manning, down 10. There's the drive put together by Dallas 72 yards it was capped off with the Beeler 30 yarder to make it 10 nothing and now the Colts will get it back needing a win here today to keep pace with the Jaguars on top of the AFC South. Tryon is waiting deep and Beeler will drive one typically gets it into the end zone. Pops this one up a bit. Try on from about the three. Gets spun around and can't make it to the 15 yard line. And we welcome you inside our booth. I thought it was interesting that when we talked with Peyton Manning, he said, now that Howard Mudd, longtime offensive line coach, been an assistant here since Peyton Manning came into the league, Tom Moore has taken a step back. Now Peyton Manning has to be the heavy around a lot of these guys and get in players' faces. 
Yeah, and that's a that's a lot of pressure on a quarterback to have to do those types of things. I've been in that situation, and I think the thing that you've got to really guard against if you're Peyton Manning is how that then impacts the relationships you have with your teammates within that locker room. Here is a handoff to Donald Brown. And Brown carries it for two. You know, oftentimes as a quarterback, you just want to go play, and, and we all know that Peyton does so much more than that. But you know, it's a good cop, bad cop type thing. And you know, Tom Moore and Howard Mudd, those guys were the bad cop to where Peyton was just able to step in and, and, and be more encouraging with the guys, but now he finds himself having to be more of the disciplinary. Manning fires and hits Reggie Wayne, who despite all the injuries around him is having a terrific year. 14 yards and a first down. Well, I've always thought Reggie Wayne has just been an exceptional player. He just goes about his business each and every week and makes a lot of plays for Peyton Manning. He had an opportunity when Marvin Harrison was on the team with him to go elsewhere and be the number one guy, but he stayed here. He knew what he had in Peyton Manning, and he's been a great player in this league for a long time. Pass is caught by Pierre Garcon. He is good for five, and let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Metafee. Big matchup in the NFC South. Falcons at the Buccaneers. Michael Turner with the early touchdown, putting Atlanta up after the five-yard score. Seven-nothing, Joe, Troy, and Pan. All right, Kurt. So the Falcons, who have never been a number one seed in the NFC playoffs, they have the best record, and they lead at Tampa Bay. Pierre Garçon is now hurt. So the list continues to grow. He was hurt earlier in the year. Coming off a good game against San Diego. And the first quarter will expire before the snap. 10 0 Dallas after one. Fox NFL Sunday will return after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. The ultimate entertainment experience with a special offer for HBO and Cinemax from AT&T U-verse. Catch the best shows in more ways than ever before. Now you can watch instantly online with HBO Go and Max Go. Plus, watch in stunning high def with 26 channels of HBO HD and Max HD. And watch whenever you want with HBO On Demand and Max On Demand. Now in HD, get more ways to watch than ever. All free with your HBO and Cinemax subscriptions from AT&T U-verse. Get HBO and Cinemax free for three months. Call 1-877-814-5216 today. Can driving a brand new Hyundai Sonata put you in the holiday spirit? Or do the holidays make it more fun to drive the Sonata? Now, during Hyundai holidays, you can lease the Sonata for just $1.99 a month. From everyone at Hyundai, happy holidays. Visit your North Texas Hyundai dealers or go to dothemathdfw.com. In that first quarter, Dallas 152 yards, 85 of them on the ground. They've been averaging 89 and a half, basically, rushing yards per game. Second and five for the Colts down 10. And here's Brown being ripped to the ground by Demarcus Ware in the backfield, a loss of three. Uh, nice work there by Demarcus Ware. He's just able to go right around Charlie Johnson, the left tackle. And he just whiffs on him. Charlie Johnson whiffs on him, and then he's right in the backfield, and Donald Brown just had nowhere to go. Brings up third and eight. Scandrick, touchdown. <laughs> Stepped in front of Blair White and took it right into the end zone and an extra point away from a 17 to nothing start. Well, that's just another throw that you can't make. You're going to see Orlando Scandrick right here, and when Peyton Manning turns this ball loose, he's underneath the route. I mean, there's just nowhere for Peyton to make that throw and think that he's going to come away with a completion. I mean the relationship there with Orlando Scandrick and Blair White he had no opportunity for a completion. It's just a bad decision. We've seen a few of those 
you know sometimes you get a ball tipped or something happens on these interceptions but the last two in this game have all been on Peyton Manning that interception the first of the year for Scandrick it's another takeaway for this Dallas defense and a 40 yard return by Scandrick it's 17 to nothing Dallas. Today's game is sponsored by Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. By Warner Brothers Pictures, Yogi Bear. Only in theaters December 17th. And by GMC. It's the GMC holiday event. Get the job done right this season with the GMC Sierra. How about the numbers piling up that are not good for Peyton Manning? And that's now three interceptions returned for touchdowns over the last two weeks against Peyton Manning. Twice in the Charger game and now... I mean, he hasn't gone through a stretch like this that we've seen. I mean, even in his rookie year, but certainly not in a long, long time. Beeler hits it. Tryon will take it out. Trying to make something happen, and Justin Tryon again cannot get to the 15 yard line. Back to the interception for the touchdown. You know, based on the way Dallas was playing coverage, the inside receivers are the guys that have to be able to win. Peyton knows that, so that's where he's looking. That's where he wants to go with the ball. The problem is Orlando Scandrick is sitting on this route, and you're going to see he clues in then on Peyton Manning. He's looking at him there. The ball comes out. He's got a break on it the entire way, and you got to come back with something to take advantage of the over aggressiveness of Orlando Scandrick. But having said that, Peyton sees that relationship. That's just a ball that he can't throw. You know, Joe, you talk about the last three game stretch. I think of the quarterbacks I've seen, you know, in the last 25 years, Peyton Manning, week in and week out, has been the most consistent quarterback I've ever seen. That's not been the case the last three weeks. Here's Hard getting it barely from Peyton Manning. He was almost dragged down before he could hand it off. But Jay Ratliff, he just went right by Jeff Saturday and he splits the gap. You're going to see him right here. He just shoots past the gap and he's in the backfield. Actually, Jeff Saturday, he wasn't blocking him at all. It was right guard Mike Pollock who just failed to come down on him. And Peyton had to even toss it. It wasn't even a clean exchange into his pocket. This offensive line for the Colts is really poor. And they are struggling. And it has to play into what's going on with Peyton Manning. Even though he's only been sacked, what, 13 times, he's getting hit more than he ever has. They never replaced Tariq Glenn at left tackle. They've missed with Tony Hugo drafting him, trading up to get him. He's been since cut. They cut Lilja. They have different guys rotating in a guard. They're a mess up front. Well, it's one thing when you're getting hit or getting pressure on pass plays, but when you start getting tackled, when you're handing the ball off, you, you, know, you know you're in for a long day. It's third down and four. Sits in the pocket and hits Garcon, who makes the catch out to the 30 for a first down. As you look at where the Colts have been after 11 games leading into this year, as they sit here now at six and five, realize the success that this franchise has enjoyed because of, in large part, Peyton Manning and what he's done. Four-time MVP. 204th consecutive start. Quick setup and throw, and it's White. And Blair White will carry it forward for six. You know, you talked about kind of the things that Peyton Manning's having to do more of, you know, in terms of holding players accountable. He's not really getting some of that help from the coaches. And I've never seen a quarterback do more in practice than what I saw from Peyton Manning on Friday. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we come back. Right now, Skandrick, who has a touchdown, is injured. They look at him. We'll take a break. Orlando Skandrick seems to be fine. He ran into his teammate, Sensabaugh. He got up and walked off. It's second and four for the Colts. Fake the handoff. High throw for Reggie Wayne. Nice catch, but he's only forward for one yard. And as we talk about what Peyton Manning does in practice, we'll see if we have enough time to talk about it with a third down here, but it's a clinic put on. Every broadcast crew talks about it. 
But he stops guys mid route and instructs them what to do and how to attack a defense. But he's trying to carry the entire load here right now for the Colts. Yeah, and you can tell. I mean, it, it, it's weighing on him heavily. Third down and two. Manning hangs in, makes the throw, and the completion to Garcon. He's got a first down for Indianapolis. A gain of five. Offensive coordinator is Clyde Christensen, and that comes with an asterisk. Anybody with Peyton Manning, whether it's Clyde Christensen or Tom Moore, at least in practice, they kind of take a back seat. Inside toss to Mike Hart, who gains one. Well, having been to a lot of practices over the last 10 years, and then of course having played myself for 12 years in the league, I. I know what everyone sees what he does on Sunday. I've just never seen a quarterback do more in practice, you know, as we were talking about. And, you know, and then when you get through the year and you're losing guys the way he has and you're getting hit the way he has, I mean, this has been a tough year on him, there's no question. Here's Blair White. He's got a first down. Yeah, I think that's the that's the good and the bad. You've got Peyton Manning. This is a timing offense. He is his brilliance is getting to the line making a defense declare what it's going to do and then changing and adjusting because he's so smart. But then you lose guys and you're trying to fit new players in to this machine that works and obviously they're going to be some. Some problems doing that on first down the handoff to Hart. And he is to the 45 for gain of one. Uh, to, to Peyton Manning's credit, I mean, when we visited with him, Joe, he said, hey, look, I know who's going to play during the week. When we're practicing, I know what guys we're going to have on the field, and it's up to us to then go out and play with those guys and win. I mean, he makes no excuses, and he holds himself accountable to play better. I think he's handling the situation very, very well. But part of what we just saw, you know, you get a first down, you run it, it's second and ten. It's not getting anything out of the running game. This is kind of like a run basically as Victor Butler makes the tackle Mike Hart got it on that little inside flip no gain and now it's third and long. Colts trying to catch the Cowboys defensively changing penalty flags fly. Cowboys may have had too many men on the field as the quick snap caught Dallas. Look at all these players trying to get off the field and some on they still couldn't get the first down. Well that's that's just. A great job by Peyton Manning seeing it and getting the ball snapped. 12 men on the field. Defense. Five yard penalty remains. Third down. So they'll take the penalty and it's still third down. It's the first penalty of the game as Jason Garrett looks at his defense, which comes in to this game having taken the ball away more since he took over as interim head coach, but giving up actually more yards per game. Well, the, the the big thing that that Dallas has done defensively here in the last three weeks is you're right. They're giving up a lot of yards, not real good in the red zone. In fact, they're awful in the red zone. But they've gotten takeaways. They've already gotten two in this game, and that's something they just could not do through the first eight games of the year. It's third down and four. Manning fires low, and the pass is caught. Garcon bailed out Manning. And really made a nice catch with good coverage. First down, Colts. Just a good job of Peyton moving in the pocket. And yeah, a little bit low, but a receiver likes that ball a little bit low, especially when he's coming in over the middle of the ball. It helps protect him and, and Peyton going to the ground once again. I think a lot of people look at the sack numbers on Peyton Manning coming into this game. He had only been sacked 13 times, second best in the NFL. And then they just assume he's not getting hit. Well, he is getting hit. He's just getting the ball out of his hand. Here's Gosson on the end around, and Pierre is inside the 30 and still going. Good run by Pierre Garcon, who picks up 11. Got around Mike Jenkins and got a first down. A pretty good stiff arm right there by Pierre Garcon, and he's able to, to then break away from Michael Jenkins. Pierre Garcon's been pretty active here in this first half, as he was last week against San Diego and now player is down on the far sideline. 
That's Jenkins who could not make the tackle on Garcon. So we'll take a break. They look at the left leg, the left knee of Mike Jenkins. First down when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Visa. More people go with Visa. Jenkins got up and he walked off. He didn't have to go far. He was on the sideline. Appears to be okay. First down, Colts. Down 17 to nothing. They faked the run. Here's Garcon again. Makes the catch down inside the 20 to the 17. Brady James on the stop, a gain of eight. Garcon last week against the Chargers, five catches, 72 yards. And Pierre has already blown past that. That's catch number six. Second and two. Hand off for a first down to Donald Brown. That carousel has continued on the inside at guard for Indianapolis as Jamie Richard, 61, has taken the place of Kyle Devan. Yeah, the guard position on both sides has, has not been real solid. In fact, really across the board, even, even Jeff Saturday, who's been such a mainstay for this offensive line for, for 12 years now, he, he has not had as good a year as what he has had in the past either. 15th play of the drive, end zone, Garcon, touchdown. Exactly what the Colts needed Manning to Pierre Garcon. Well Peyton just anticipates the timing of this throw and makes a perfect pass. I mean a good route there by Pierre Garcon but when Peyton turned it loose Garcon had not yet gotten into that break and just great execution. How about Pierre seven catches 55 yards a touchdown a 15 play drive that ends with this. A beautiful throw, a good catch. Colts on the board, down by 10. For Pierre Garcon, his seven catches ties a regular season career high at 11 in a playoff game against the Jets. But for a guy who was the fourth selection in the sixth round by the Colts back in 08. Peyton Manning's been looking for him, finding him. Manning was 10 for 10 on that drive. Taking it out of the end zone is McCann. And well covered downfield by the Colts. Al Afalava made the stop after a 16 yard return. It's the first ever American Country Awards, hosted by Trace Adkins. With over 15 performances from country music's biggest stars. It's the only country music awards show where you vote for the winner. The American Country Awards live tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on Fox. That's tomorrow. Right now, it's the Cowboys up 10. Starting at their 13. Felix Jones gets one. You look at Felix Jones really this year and the way that that he has run the ball the one thing that's really been missing is that he has not had near the explosive runs that that he had had his first few years in the league he's he's heavier than what he was when he came in the league but you just haven't seen that burst and no one's really able to understand exactly why that is. Crowds back in it on second and nine pass is caught by Miles Austin two yards short of a first down Lacey on the coverage well, they get Miles Austin involved you know over the last four games you know he really has not been all that involved compared to where he was earlier in the year you know, the first two games he had 20 receptions he was on pace for a monster year Things slowed up a little bit once Tony Romo went down third down and two.
Quick setup, the throw. Austin incomplete. And well covered by Justin Tryon. An extra defensive back. Yeah, Justin Tryon getting his opportunity because of Kelvin Hayden being down. And but that was a ball that that Miles Austin had a chance on. But you see, Tryon, he did have his left hand you know, in between the outstretched arms there of Miles Austin. That for Kitna, his first incompletion of the game. First punt is from McBriar. And Blair White with a nice return. And down by 10. After a 12 yard return tackle by McCray good field position for Peyton Manning. We welcome you back to Indianapolis they're the offensive leaders and for the Colts a 15 play drive to get them on the board last time they had it trying to maintain some of that momentum. You see Donald Brown four rushes four yards. I, I think I would I wouldn't even run the ball again. You know I mean I like my chances just letting Peyton Manning throw it every down rather than waste a waste a snap handing it off for one yard. And yet they still do the play fake which should fool <laughs> nobody. There you go they're running it and they're running it nowhere. Mike Hart to the line of scrimmage. They just cannot run the ball. No and, it, and they haven't Joe in in quite some time. You know you go back it's been really several years since they've run the ball well and in 08 they were last in the league in yard per carry average last year they were 30th in the league and, and coming into this game they were 30th and so they've never been real good at it at least in recent years. But it's been really bad and I, like I said I just put the ball in Peyton Manning's hands and see what he can do with it the entire game. Second down and 10 Garcon and that is well played by the rookie Sean Lee. Second round pick Troy out of Penn State. Yeah and that's you know in talking with Paul Pascaloni the defensive coordinator that is the one play that he was concerned about and knew they needed to play well against. Cowboys were late getting on the field again defensively and this one's broken up. Jenkins on the coverage pass intended for Reggie Wayne and after having great starting field position it's a three and out for the Colts who are down by 10 and really another throw Allen Ball is in a great position to get over the top and he's the guy who helped break it up and so Allen Ball has been pretty disruptive they typically have not played the ball well in the air we've seen they've already gotten two interceptions but Peyton has tried to fit some balls in today that with Allen Ball and where he has been it's just not going to happen. McAfee hits it and a fair catch is bobbled but caught by Brian McCann. We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world watching today's broadcast in 175 countries on AFM the American Forces Network. We thank you for all you do. We hope you're enjoying today's telecast. That's the Fox Sports Skybox on a Southwest Asia base. 5,000 square feet filled with TVs, pool tables for the service men and women to watch games. It opened this summer. So here's Dallas up by 10, three minutes, 10 seconds left in the first half. And a delayed handoff to Felix Jones, not much. Well played up front. And Gary Brackett, who's back at middle linebacker, was in the middle of it a gain of two. Well, I know they're glad to have Gary Brackett back. He's been the captain of this defense for for a long time and they had to move the rookie Pat Angerer from the outside to the middle when Brackett's been out. And they weren't real sure how long he was going to be able to play here today but he's he looks to be moving off the well. Second down and nine. Kitten is going to run and he has run well. Has a 29 yard touchdown run already since taking over and now he picks up a first down. As he's driven out of bounds, a gain of 18. He just kind of lulls people to sleep because people don't expect him to run the ball, and you're going to see this open up right in front of him. And and so why not? Everyone's got their back to him. Bracket was really the only guy you can tell he's a little bit hobbled there with the toe, not able to run quite at full speed. But you know, John Kitten is one of those savvy type guys. I, I think he's a player who he doesn't wow you a lot when you just watch him practice, but. He's the guy who's going to make the play and do something to beat you and he's a great competitor 
and he's played very well as an experienced veteran guy filling in for Tony Romo. And we'll be at the two minute warning when the Cowboys snap it the next time a first down the ball at their own 38 as they lead the Colts by 10. Visa halftime reports coming up Kurt Terry Howie and Jimmy will have scores and highlights Fox Sports ticker will have all the latest stats as you track your fantasy team this weekend first down for Dallas up by 10 and Kitten has all day and slings it over the middle had Des Bryant wide open and threw it into the turf. You see the attention that Dwight Freeney gets. He tries an inside rush here, and that's you know really where everybody was. And so, if you're Doug Free, the left tackle, you like that move. And and John Kidna should be upset with himself because Aaron Francisco was trying to disguise coverage, and he had to run out of there. And there was a big big hole for John Kidna. He just pulled it in the dirt. Second and ten. And a handoff to Felix Jones. Running right through this defense gets nine third down and one coming up Cowboys have all three of their timeouts remaining you know momentum was starting to change there for the Colts and they got the ball in that last possession with great field position in Dallas defensively just did a nice job of stopping. Them. And now a timeout taken by the sideline. Kitna was playing around changing the play at the line, and Jason Garrett on the sideline just called the timeout. Third and one. Early game headliners. Brett Favre was knocked out of the ball game with a shoulder injury on his first attempt. And then Tavares Jackson came in, the defense and the offense put it to the Buffalo Bills. Aaron Rodgers, a win at home over San Francisco, and Brandon Jacobs, his day. Bradshaw also had two rushing touchdowns as the Giants took apart the Redskins. Pretty good yard per carry average there for for Brandon Jacobs and I, and I know you like those Green Bay Packer uniforms they had on today. Wow, that's a play-by-play announcer's nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> well, throwback uniforms. Yeah. I, I, I wish they would just do away with the throwback. I'm about tired of seeing those, aren't you? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, know who you're watching. Gonna last? Been going on 15 years. Third down and one. Choice at tailback. He gets it. And Tashard Choice has a first down in midfield. Hey, I like Tashard Choice. Now he's been so patient this year and frustrated, but he's been pretty quiet about it, really. And you know, he knew today, even though I think he's proven himself every time he's really been given a legitimate opportunity to carry the ball, you know, he knew that this was another opportunity for him to do that, and he's having a nice day. Kidna down the sideline airs it out in the pass incomplete for Des Bryant. It'll be second and ten. Well, during the week, Deshard Choice was sure upset, didn't say anything, but was upset by owner Jerry Jones saying that, well, the reason he hasn't been more involved in the offense carrying the ball is because he's played poorly on special teams, which doesn't really compute. But Choice has made the most of this chance here in Indianapolis today. Yeah, he's not really great at any one thing, but he's really good at everything. You know, he's a good blocker, a good runner, and a good solid receiver also. On second and ten, Kidna steps up, finds Bennett, and Bennett dropped by Tryon with Bethay coming to help a gain of seven. 46 and counting left in the first half. And Dallas will take a timeout. You know, John Kidna at the age of 38 is putting up, no matter how you cut it, some of the best numbers of his career. And when you look over the last five weeks at what he's done compared to other quarterbacks around the NFL he's right there in the top five in all the big categories I had a chance to talk to him prior to him becoming a starter when Romo was still healthy and I said you know how talented is this group and he said I got in the huddle one day in training camp and I looked around he said it was the most talented group he had ever been in the huddle with and this was the second team 
And so he's had some good years in this league Joe whether it be the time he was in Cincinnati or or also as the starter there in Detroit. But this is the best collection of players that he's had around him and and I think he's really done a nice job took him a little bit of time to settle in it had been a while since he had played competitively but he's been good the last few weeks. It's third down and three. They don't hand it off throw it first down Austin makes the catch brought down by Lacey a gain of seven. Well what the Cowboys are doing is they're offsetting the tight end to help with White Freeney and that's what they did on the last play to give Kitten the time to make the throw. They You're clock it on first down so back to the throw. You're going to see Martellus Bennett how he's offset to not give Dwight Freeney a short edge to get the pressure then on the quarterback and here's the throw and this is a big third down right here because what happens is, is this leads to points. You know if the Colts are able to make a stop on that third down then they're not going to get points and now in all likelihood Dallas is going to at least get a chance to try for a long field goal if nothing else. It'll be a 54 yard try from right here. Cowboys have one timeout left. Kedna completes it. Nice catch by Austin. Showing those great hands down to the 25, a gain of 11. Yeah, you're right, Joe. I mean, that, that's that's just him just pulling it right out of the air. That was an excellent catch. Tell you what, it's a false start. They would have a 10 second runoff, except the Dallas Cowboys have a timeout left. So they're going to get a shot. Here at a field goal. Because that penalty shut down the Ball running game clock. Number 82, offense. Dallas elected to take a timeout instead of having the election of having a 10 second runoff. Timeout Dallas, third and final team timeout. So they have to use we'll their the final team. timeout. And you would imagine that the field goal attempt will come. Next. Yeah, there's Witten right there. He's trying to get situated and the ball snapped. And how about John Kenny trying to pull a little Dan Marino on him? You know, Dan did that, I think, against the, the Bills back, back in the mid 90s. Or I think it was the, the maybe it was the Jets. But uh, Kitna trying it himself, not, not quite as successful as when Marino did it. But you could say that about a lot of quarterbacks who tried to <laughs> impersonate Dan Marino. Beeler's already hit from 30. Now he's going to try from 43, make it 48. To add to what is now a 10 point lead. Good snap, good hold. Beeler missed it. So a legitimate chance. And David Beeler is now 14 of 20. Kicking field goals in his first full year of getting to do that in the NFL. He pushed this one wide right. Well he's always got the leg he's just been real inconsistent with his aiming you know I mean usually he pulls it left this time he pushes it right and so Kitten is ticked off after getting his team down the field in a position to <laughs> add to a 10 point lead. Uh, I know how the quarterback feels sometimes when you get down there in a position and you're not able to come away with any points. An 11 play drive covering 53 yards no points at 17 7 halfway through it Cowboys have come to play it's halftime in Indianapolis. Some of the pictures from the first half here in Indianapolis starting the second half now 10 point Dallas Cowboys lead welcome inside the broadcast booth. What do you want to talk about. <laughs> I think the turning point not necessarily turning point but one of the areas there in the first half where the Colts just failed to take advantage was when they got the ball after scoring the touchdown to cut this game to 10 points they got it on the 47 yard line with just over four minutes left in the half. And the Cowboys forced a three and out. I think at that point, the Colts really had a lot of momentum going in their favor, but give the Dallas defense credit for being able to come up with a three and out stop. Yeah, they had the one good drive. The Indianapolis Colts did a 15 play drive. But Manning was 10 for 10 for their one touchdown. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Glad you're with us. What kind of a second half is it going to be for the Indianapolis Colts? 
who started last year 14 and 0. Pulled their starters in the Jets game in the 15th game of the season. They lost that game. Lost to Buffalo. They ended up in the Super Bowl. They've played in two of the last four Super Bowls, but they're 8 and 8 since that 14 and 0 start a year ago. And right now trying to win here today to keep pace with the Jacksonville Jaguars who won today. Right now it's the Jags on top in the AFC South. These two teams meet here in two weeks. Beeler pounds it toward the back of the end zone and Tryon will take an eight. Down to the field, here's Pam Oliver. Well, Joe spoke to Jason Garrett about the team's offensive goals for this half. He said, first of all, we got to respect the fact that we're playing against a very good football team. Also have to continue our mix of the run in the past. Jim Caldwell said, we have got to stop them from being so effective running the football. He also said, we need to get some turnovers to match the Cowboys' 10 points off turnovers in the first half. Back to you. All right, Pam. Yeah, a couple of Peyton Manning interceptions. One went directly into the end zone for a touchdown returned by Skandrick. Down by 10, starting with a throw. Pass is complete to Reggie Wayne, who has a first down and more. Reggie Wayne came into this game number two in the NFL with 76 catches. He picks up 16 yards and a nice completion to start this second half. Yeah, he's been kind of the one guy that that Peyton Manning's been able to rely on. You see Orlando Skandrick who had the interception right now. Brian McCann is playing in this nickel package. On first down this is Donald Brown. Who gets to the 40 and that is thrown to the ground a gain of four. Brian McCann out there on coverage so Skandrick is out. He is one of the extra defensive backs. That means that McCann gets more action, and number 37 has come up with some big plays. Including a 101 yard interception return for a touchdown at the Giants four weeks ago. Here's Tammy. The tight end makes a move, and he's down inside the 35. Newman on the stop, a catch and run of 26. Well, you see, Tammy, he comes off the line of scrimmage, and he's got Brooking on him, and you know, this guy runs very well. And I know that Peyton Manning said, hey, Tammy has got to be able to beat the matchup whenever Keith Brooking is on him, and he did there. Longest play of the day for Indianapolis, 26 yards. Here's one for it all. Juggled, caught, touchdown. Reggie Wayne, what a catch. Well, we've seen Allen Ball get involved in everything down the field. This time, Peyton Manning's able to hold him, and you're going to see Peyton. He's going to pump the inside, which holds Allen Ball on the inside receiver, opens up the throw then up the sideline, and a perfectly thrown pass by Peyton Manning to Reggie Wayne. A little bobble. Jenkins was there, but a beautiful throw from Peyton Manning. 24 touchdown throws on the season, and just like that, With a minute seven off the clock, it's a three-point game. Jenkins almost got it. Reggie Wayne did. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Budweiser, great times are waiting. Grab some buds. By the Ford F-150 and its four new engines, this is the future of truck. And by the Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Friday, only in theaters. Well, it was a 10-point game at the half. It was 17 to nothing right out of the gate. Dallas on top, and Peyton Manning said, so what? Off to work we go, and it's a three-point game. Well, you never get comfortable when you're playing against Manning. And now the Dallas Cowboys have Des Bryant returning the kick right up the middle. And Bryant, the rookie, is out to the 39. <laughs> Don't get comfortable with Des Bryant returning or returning kicks either. No, he's returned two punts for touchdowns, and now a 42-yard kick return right up the middle. Well, here's the one play to Jacob Tammy against Keith Brookin. Keith Brookin was questionable all week long because of a sprained foot, and he just cannot run with Tammy. And then this is the touchdown. Just great execution. By Peyton Manning holding Allen Ball, so like I said, something he was unable to do for most of the first half, but he did there and got the one-on-one -on -one isolation to Reggie Wayne. 
Kitna's in trouble, spins out. Penalty flag for a hold. And Kitna's dragged down on a nice play by Pat Angerer. The rookie Holding. linebacker out of Iowa. Number 68 offense. Then you penalty. That's Doug Free. Yeah, and you can understand why, because <laughs> he's going to get the bull rush right there by Dwight Freeney. You know, Dwight Freeney, as most people know who've been watching him play over the years, he's got a great spin move. He's got a couple different spin moves, actually. And as good as those are, I, I, I like his bull rush the best. And it's awfully effective because once a tackle starts worrying about that spin, then you're susceptible to someone coming right at you with power like he just showed. First down and 20. Here's Felix Jones. Picks up three. Dwight Freeney was coached by Paul Pasqualoni, who's now the defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys, took over when Wade Phillips was fired and he coached Dwight Freeney in college he said he had unbelievable vision and could see from his spot all the way down the line and the minute anybody twitched he was getting off the ball. He's got great speed too. He ran a 4 4 40 at his pro timing day coming out of Syracuse. Out of the shotgun on second down pass caught by Bennett. He's back to the 43rd and 10 coming up. And we heard Pam's report when she had a chance to talk with head coach Jim Caldwell saying we've got to be able to control this running game by Dallas. I think that even though the Colts have not been real good against the run, I think it was a little bit of a surprise to see Dallas have as much success as they had there in that first half running the ball. Third down and 10. Kitna going to try and run for it, and he slides forward short of a first down. Cornelius Brown was there, and by what, less than half a yard, it's fourth down. Yeah, John Kitna, here he is. He's trying to get the first down and at the same time protect himself. Had he have just tried running through that and then dove for the first down, even knowing there's going to be contact. He would have been able to pick that one up. They bring McBriar on, but he's lined up wide to the bottom of your screen. And a timeout will be taken here by the Colts. So the special teams coordinator, Jody Camillus, with a little trickery, and the Colts want to talk about it. It'll be fourth down, Dallas, when we come back. Now the Cowboys are going to punt it on fourth and one. McBriar has had a great year. Blair White catches the ball at the 12. Fair catch. And we look ahead to next week as the Colts have it down by three. Next week, the Giants at the Vikings. Will Brett Favre make the start after injuring his shoulder today? Will it be Tavares Jackson after their win over Buffalo? Packers and Lions. Falcons, Panthers, Rams, and Saints. Later on in the day are the Seahawks and the 49ers. They all start taking on a little more importance once you get beyond Thanksgiving, don't they? Especially out in that doggy dog world of the NFC West. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Manning on first down, throws it sidearm, and what a hit. Laid on Blair White by Sean Lee. And Blair White just pops right back up. And Blair White's just happy to be playing. A gain of four. Blair White was picked up in week three of free agent out of Michigan State. Here's Reggie Wayne. He's out to the 21, a gain of four. Third and a couple coming up. Allen Ball on the tackle for Dallas. I mean, we spent so much time talking about the guys who aren't playing. You know, Jacob Tammy, Blair White, you know, those guys. They've done really a nice job of stepping in and, and being productive. And a lot of that, of course, has to do with who's throwing on the ball. But not many teams that would have been able to overcome some of the things that this Colts team has offensively. It's third down and two. Handoff is to Mike Hart. And Hart can't pick it up. First guy there was Brady James. And so it's a three and out, it would appear. For the Indianapolis Colts, they tried to run it, and they proved once again that they can't do it. Yeah, they just they 
just can't get any type of, of movement up front. And, and, and hey, I'm all about running the football and trying to keep a defense off balance. But when you've just had no success whatsoever really doing it, and you've got Peyton Manning as your quarterback, I, I think that I would just say, okay, and, and right now, Joe Heck, he's on pace to have more passing attempts than anybody in the history of the game. By the way, Orlando Skandrick is out with a concussion for the Dallas Cowboys. He's got an interception for a touchdown in this game, and here is Des Bryant who will stay away. It is corralled by Jesse Holly. Another dangerous play after the punt. Cowboys have it. 42 yard punt. Dallas up three. About a then and now, who was the first pick for the Colts in 1990? First overall, Jeff George played four seasons for the Colts. Right now, he's living here in Indianapolis. Full time dad helps coach his kids' basketball and football teams. He runs the Jeff George Foundation, which helps to raise awareness for breast cancer. His mother, Judy, recently passed away with breast cancer. And he still thinks he can help an NFL team as a backup. Yeah, well, he's, he's shocked that Carolina and maybe a couple of other teams didn't call him and give him a chance this year. At 40, he'll be 43 next week. Here's Felix Jones, a nice run on first down. The Cowboys are doing what the Colts can. As Jones picks up five. You know, and Jeff George, he ended up playing, which is surprising to me, ended up playing for eight teams, you know, during his NFL career and, and never, never was able to really find a home. But well, I tell you what, you watch him throw a ball, there haven't been many that could throw it better than he could. It's second down and five from the Dallas 41. Jones brought down in the backfield. Play made by Eric Foster. Well, Eric Foster, he's able to get past Mark Colombo there. He slipped on the block, and Eric Foster was able to get inside and then get the pressure and, and make a nice tackle there on Felix Jones. Loss of five, third and ten. Over the middle, Witten makes a nice catch. To the Colts 45 stuck his hands out made the grab a 19 yard catch. You see right here the linebacker he gets caught looking inside. That's Taiwan Hagler and because of the play action play action in the backfield by John Kidna it was just enough in that zone coverage to get Jason Witten then in behind it. A nice grab by Jason Witten. Only his second catch of this game. Guy who's number four all time in the NFL. Catches by tight end. Kitna goes down. Mathis. First Colts sack of this game. They're starting to heat up now on this on this defensive front, and you know Colombo got beat. We saw. Earlier by Eric Foster. This time he got Robert Mathis, who was able to go right through him and then get the sack. Loss of nine. Quick throw on a completion to Roy Williams. Picking his way, gets a block from Des Bryant and gets a first down. How about second and 19 and Roy Williams is good for 22. Well, they're in man coverage pretty well designed route there by coordinator Jason Garrett. You're going to see the upfield release by Miles Austin and it created some traffic then for Jacob Lacey. He had to come over the top and created a nice throwing lane for Kidna to Williams. Still a good catch by Williams on the move reaching out to grab it 22 yards first down. First game back for Roy Williams after that. Crushing fumble at the end of the game at home on Thanksgiving against the Saints. Kedna toward the end zone. Austin out of his reach. Got behind Lacey, but they was there as well, second and ten. A nice route by Miles Austin because he got up one on one on Antoine Bethay and, and was able to then beat him to the corner. And 
just missed on that one. Second and ten choice. Brought down by Cavell Connor, a gain of four. And we see Antoine Bethay, and, and he coming into this game was leading the Colts in tackles, and so he's a guy who they prefer to have around the line of scrimmage. He certainly will get back and he'll play coverage as we saw, but you know, one on one with Miles Austin on that corner route, a pretty good matchup there for Dallas. Gerard Powers out of the lineup for the Colts on third and six. This one for Miles Austin not looking for it and almost hit him. Kidna had to get rid of it because of the blitz and Miles Austin that thing almost dropped right on top of his helmet. Yeah he, he either did not know the ball had been thrown or he lost it in the lights and, and Kidna is upset because he, he read the blitz. He knew he had to get it out of his hands. And he had one on one and Cornelius Brown he never saw the ball either so had had Miles Austin have been able to locate it he would have had a pretty easy chance to pull that one in for a touchdown. And here's a reaction from Kidna. And now field goal try 46 yards for Beeler one of two on the day. And after pushing a 48 yarder his last time he drills a 46 yarder. I don't know what Kidna would have done had he had missed that one. Applause from Jason Garrett, whose Cowboys are up by six. There's the scoring drive. It didn't end in a touchdown, but instead a 46-yard field goal from Beeler. Nine plays, 3:45 off the clock, six-point game, with over five to play in the third quarter. Tryon waiting for it. This is the worst team in the NFL returning kickoffs. Tryon has had a rough day so far, and he'll take a knee. Let's go back to that play with Kitna getting rid of it on the blitz. Colts first and ten at their own 20 yard line. Yeah, Kidna did all he could as far as getting it up, but as you can tell, Miles Austin just had no idea where the ball was. And it looks like he's he's maybe pointing at the lights and, and then Des Bryant he came over to visit with John Kidna and John Kidna is a little he's a little fiery and a little perturbed today. He's just not in the mood for conversation. <laughs> Bryant was the one fiery in their last game at home against the Saints. <laughs> yes he was. Meanwhile Peyton Manning is 17 for his last 18 with two touchdowns. After a four for seven start with two interceptions. He's got time and he flips it pass caught by Hart and Hart is dumped by Sean Lee and now Hart limps off he's been bothered by a bad ankle and he hobbles away a penalty flag down on that first down throw pass interference number 15 of the offense 10 yard penalty still first down they get Blair White on an offensive pass interference. Hey, Sean Lee, the second round pick out of Penn State, the linebacker, 6'2, 242, looks like he can run. And he's been out there in coverage. He was the one who made that play, and it looks like Hart has re injured that left leg. Well, Sean Lee, he got a pretty good education on how to play the linebacker position there at Penn State. They've, they've had a few over the years. First to 20 from the 10. The seam for Tammy can't hang on. Since the ball broke it up. Yeah, it was just Peyton Manning trying to fit one in there to Jacob Tammy, knowing that it was going to be contested because of Sense of Ball, the safety being in a pretty good location to make a play, and he's just hoping that he could fit it in before Sense of Ball would be able to make contact. And you know, just an awfully tough catch there for, for Jacob Tammy to try to pull in. Second and 20, and the pass is picked off. Intercepted by Lee. 
the rookie with his first. Sean Lee. Touchdown. Manning trying to force it to Blair White. Those two talk, and it's another pick six against Peyton Manning. And another easy one to make. You know, Sean Lee was, was playing deep. He was basically playing deep middle. You know, he's down the middle of the field and just reading Peyton Manning the entire way. You got Blair White who's trying to work then to the seam, but Peyton, because Peyton Manning never saw Sean Lee. And, and I think part of that, you, you, you're seeing Peyton Manning today telegraph throws that you just never saw before. I think part of it is he's not real sure where his own guys are going to be. So he can't so much focus on looking guys off. He's trying to figure out where he's, his players are going to be. And as a result, these defensive players, safeties, and that time Sean Lee gets a jump on the ball. And so for Sean Lee, the second round pick, his first interception. 31 yard return for the touchdown his first touchdown and Peyton Manning has a talk with one of the young Colt receivers. How about now 10 interceptions in the last three games for Peyton Manning four have been returned for touchdowns to last week to today and it's a 13 point Dallas Cowboy lead. I'm just seeing Peyton Manning do things that you know as far as staring down receivers and not moving defenders. I just never seen him do those types of things in all these years. Tryon will just take a knee. Let's go back to that interception by Sean Lee. Now you see Sean Lee right here and he's just going to drop deep middle. And he's reading Peyton Manning the entire way. You see Peyton, all he's doing is trying to figure out where Blair White is going. And Sean Lee, a rookie second round pick here, you know, I think he might have kept that ball. <laughs> Not many guys in as a rookie get a chance to pick off Peyton Manning, but he got pressure in the pocket, as you see, and he, he got a little banged up. Sean Lee did. He doesn't have the ball with him, but. We're seeing Peyton Manning just doing some things in this game and really in the last few weeks that we're just not used to seeing. I think again it goes back to having all these young receivers around. Javaris James goes to the line of scrimmage. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Same highlight, different game. This time it's Seattle linebacker Lofa Tatuku picking off Jimmy Clausen and returning at 26 yards for a score. Seattle has scored 17 unanswered, has a three-point lead over Carolina. Joe. All right, Kurt, thank you. Seattle very much alive in that four NFC West. Manning throws and completes Reggie Wayne with a flag down. Thrown in the secondary. Yeah, it looked to me like that might be on Michael Jenkins. This could be the second penalty on Indianapolis, or is it against the defense and Jenkins? It appears Jenkins. There's no foul on the play. The result of the play is the first down. So you saw that contact and one official overrules the other they pick up the flag and it's a 17 yard completion to Reggie Wayne. Under five to play third quarter. Over the left side, with one of the better runs of the day, a five yard gain. Brady James on the stop. And you can talk about Troy trying to force the run, but a lot of that's got to be Peyton Manning up at the line. He seems to have free will and reign to do whatever he wants, either into a run, out of it, and yet he's still trying to stick with it. Yeah, I think he's trying to because what he has seen this year is teams just playing coverage against him. And just daring them to be able to stop the run or to be able to run the ball against a, a front that favors them. Here's James on a little drop off pass, and Javaris going to fight for a first down. Peyton Manning has been in the playoffs as the two teams start to rough it up. No flags are thrown. Manning's been in the playoffs 10 times in his 12 year career coming into this season. Super Bowl team from a year ago. Right now, Indianapolis trying to win here to keep pace with Jacksonville, and they have their rematch with the Jaguars in two weeks. And remember that Jacksonville won the last time these two teams met. Hand off to 
through Javarnas James. He spins into Dallas territory, but flags fly. Umpire threw it. Here's Pete Personal Morelli. foul. Grabbing the face mask. Number 81 of the offense. 15 yard penalty. Still first down. Brody Eldridge. You're going to see right here, Dallas is playing with the safeties deep right here. The tight end is the one who had the penalty called against them, but the safeties being deep means that they are playing coverage and now you've got a numbers advantage to be able to run the football or you should be able to and that's what Peyton Manning has been looking at not just in this game but he's been looking at it each and every week and so teams are playing coverage and with that you've got to be able to run the ball somewhat effectively on early down it becomes very difficult to continue to try to throw the football into those looks but Peyton I, I know is getting frustrated with the lack of success doing it. Here's Javaris James after the 15 yard penalty which is a big one thrown to the ground by Brady James after a gain of just four with coming up on two minutes left in the third quarter and there is Mike Hart who is again bothered by an ankle injury Joseph Adai who does everything from the running back position for the Colts is missing his sixth straight game with a neck injury may come back next week they need him. To the sideline, there's Eldridge. And Brody makes the catch a gain of eight. Clock continues to wind. Third and long coming up. And what happens then is because Dallas is playing, they're they're just determined not to give anything deep down the field. And so Peyton is having to be very, very patient. Now you're sitting here looking at a third and twelve. And he knows in order to pick up this first down, he's got to try to get the ball down the field, something that's been hard to do. Cowboys are showing blitz. Manning checks out of something. Manning steps up, throws, and hits Blair White for a first down. A big completion from Peyton Manning of 13 yards. You know, well, Blair White's going to run a good route here, but Terrence Newman sees it and he plays it very well. He was just a little bit late getting back to it, but he got his head around, saw that Blair White was coming out to the sideline, but the ball beat him before he was able to make a play. That was a good third down conversion there by the Colts. Take the inside hand off. Manning down the middle. Pass is caught. Short of the end zone is Reggie Wayne. They'll mark him at the one. Third quarter is running out of time under 10 seconds. It's first and goal from the one. Reggie Wayne. Complete. And that's how the third quarter will end with an incompletion to Reggie Wayne. So here are the Colts needing a win. Down by 13, second and goal from the one. When we start the fourth, back after this from your local Fox station. 15 minutes to go as we start the fourth quarter. It's a 13 point game and it's second and goal for the Colts at the Dallas one. And they're in a position where you'd like to line up and be able to try and pound it into the end zone, but they haven't been able to line up and pound anything. Here's the big completion to Reggie Wayne. Yeah, they had a nice route combination. They ran take Jacob Tammy vertically on the safety to hold him, which forced then the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Michael Jenkins. James in a tailback. He gets it, and he fights his way in for the touchdown. And a good effort by Javaris James. His third rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, you're right, because he got jammed right at the line of scrimmage, but he was able to keep his feet going and then just get enough to get it across the goal line. And you know, that's a nice that's a nice drive by the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, as, as inconsistent as this game has been for them offensively, and as much as Peyton Manning has struggled, they do have big playability. They keep showing, and now it's a six-point game. The key play 
The 40-yarder to Reggie Wayne. Set up Javaris James to pound it in. 27-21. Cowboys on top. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Jeep. By UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. And by Subway Restaurants. Try the meltastic new Chipotle chicken and cheese today. 27-21. Reggie Wayne has been doing it for a long time. He set it up. He's got seven catches in this game. He got a 40-yarder from Peyton Manning. 83 catches on the season. 751 completions from Peyton Manning in the time they've spent together. It's the number two duo in yardage in NFL history. Number one is Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. Here's Des Bryant. A little hesitation. Showing off his speed. Gets by McAfee. Penalty flag comes in. And Tryon saves a touchdown. But a flag is down at the 41. He is electrifying. <laughs> well, I'll say. He showed great patience there. And I think he kind of lulled everybody to slow down a little bit. And then he saw a little crease and hit it. Flag was thrown late in the return by Des Bryant. Here's a call. During the return, holding, receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. See him right here. Des Bryant stops for just a minute and then reverses field. Looked like the call might have been right there on Sam Hurd, number 17. And it looked like it was a design deal that Des Bryant was going to start to his right, show that it was going to be a return right, and then reverse field and make it a return left. It was a great return without the hold by Sam Hurd. It was an 85 yard return, and instead of starting at the Colts 16, because of the penalty, now the ball is marked at the Dallas 32. So a little stoppage prior to first down Dallas a snap of the football and here we go Dallas up by six Kittner sets up the screen with Felix Jones good play welcome back to this linebacking core they have players now in their normal positions and Taiwan Hagler came up to make that play as that group has been solidified with a return of Gary Brackett. Here are the offensive leaders for Dallas. 147 yards through the air for Kitna. Choice 51 yards on the ground as he is welcomed back with more action for Dallas here today. Here's Felix Jones. Well played. Moala. Third and seven. See the spin move right here up top. Him one on one on Doug Free, and he gets Doug Free worrying about the speed rush to the outside. The spin move underneath. John Kidna going down with a sack. And this defense for the Colts just stepped up. Eighth sack of the year for Freeney. And that's his first tackle overall in this game. And it's blocked. Blocked by the Colts into the end zone. Touchdown. Smith. Smith. 
Smith comes right through here. They overload that one side. They got what they wanted. And Smith then just has to be able to make the block. He gets a favorable bounce and is able to recover it for the touchdown. Just added to the active roster this week. He was on the practice squad of the Colts in 08 and 09. Now the Colts are leading for the first time in this game. Smith made the play. McBriar has his first punt blocked all year. And now the Cowboys are down by one. Well, Taj Smith made the play for the Colts. Their last block punt return for a touchdown was an 89 against the 49ers. And Smith, who had a good preseason but hurt his hamstring during camp, was cut. The Colts had to wait until November to re-sign him. Just activated him. And he makes the special teams play to put the Colts on top for the first time all day. Des Bryant can't make the 20. Cavell Connor on the stop. Here's the block. Smith then appeared to be down before getting into the end zone, but they call it a touchdown. No red flag was thrown. He would have clearly been short of the end zone, but then you're talking about first and goal from the one. Now Des Bryant, the rookie, is down and needing attention from the Cowboys training staff. We'll take a break as they hold their breath on the Dallas side. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. They were looking at the right leg. It might be the right ankle or knee. And Des Bryant needs a lot of help to get off the field after returning that kick. You see the foot, ankle underneath the body of Cavell Connor. Always the danger of somebody that. Effective as a receiver returning kicks. As Felix Jones picks up three. Antonio Johnson made the stop, and here's one more look at Des Bryant. The tackle by Cavell Connor. Yeah, they were looking at the right ankle, and Des Bryant had a high ankle sprain going back to training camp that's been kind of bothering him throughout the year. But how about the difference special teams made on that last possession? You get the Des Bryant return that's brought back because of penalty on Sam Hurd. And then you get the Todd Smith punt block and a big chain of events just on special teams alone. On second down on the ground the carry by Felix Jones for a first down. And Dallas gets 10 yards from Felix Jones. The first ever American Country Awards hosted by Trace Atkins. Over 15 performances from country music's biggest stars. The only country music award show where you vote for the winner. The American Country Awards live tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on Fox. First down, Dallas. You know what? I'll be watching tomorrow night. From the 33. Cowboys with 152 rush yards on the day. Deshard Choice adds three more. So the Colts, who trailed 17 to nothing one minute into the second quarter of this game, now lead at 28 27. Special teams coordinator Ray Richleski for the Indianapolis Colts has to be pleased. With what Taj Smith was able to do on that block punt for the touchdown. Well, no doubt. I mean, it's been big plays, whether it's the block punt or the offensive side of the ball. We've seen the interceptions, the interception for a touchdown by Sean Lee, but the, the Colts come right back with big plays to get themselves right in the game. Here's Choice. And he's tripped up. Good play made by Buffet. Might have saved a big play, a gain of just one. Yeah that was a nice play because he had blocking out in front and it looked like that was going to go for a nice game for choice had but they not have been there to make that play so now once again a critical third down play.
Extra men on the rush and the pass complete for a first down to Witten. Ten yards and a first down, a third down conversion, third catch for Jason Witten. We haven't seen the Colts bring a lot of pressure. They brought linebacker there, Taiwan Hagler. Then he has to be the guy who comes over and covers Jason Witten. If Jason Witten releases vertically off the ball, it's going to be very difficult, as it was, for Hagler then to get there and make a play. Trying to disguise what they were doing within the defensive scheme, freed up, freed up Witten for that first down. Handoff Felix Jones, he's been busy. A season high running day for the Dallas Cowboys, a gain of two. And Felix Jones, who has the only 100 yard individual rushing day this season for Dallas, he's up around the 70 yard mark. He's carried it 17 times for 68. Yeah, Dallas was going to have to come into this game and continue doing the things that they have done in recent weeks. Stay balanced, run the football, try to neutralize Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. They, they have not only been able to run the ball, but they've been able to run the ball well. You know, it's one thing to have rushing attempts. It's another thing to have success while you're doing that. Kevin Ogletree is in the lineup now for Dallas. Here's Witten. And he is tripped up, brought down right at the marker. Ogletree, who's been inactive for seven straight games, a special teamer, was moved up to the active list. Now with Des Bryant out with the ankle injury, Kevin Ogletree, who doesn't have a catch all year, is in an important spot for the Dallas Cowboys, and we are going to get a measurement. You know, Jason Witten, I know, was a concern coming into this game. He is each and every week, but Larry Coyer, the defensive coordinator, he said, we do not have a guy on our team defensively that can cover Jason Witten one-on-one. -on -one. And we've seen that. On that last play, he was one-on-one, -on -one and he had several steps on the defender. First down, Dallas. You talk about Larry Coyer, defensive coordinator. It's up to his group. After the Colts in a really important game here with a record of six and five having lost three of their last four and at the moment trailing the Jaguars in the division. They've lost the head to head to Jacksonville earlier in the year. Hoyer's defense has to make a stop. Choice gets it. And Tashard pushes the pile down near the 38 to gain a five. Big Leonard Davis pulled on that power play to the left. And I know. Yeah, I laugh because Leonard Davis has struggled a little bit this year. But what did Larry Coyer tell us on Friday? He said, I'm watching film on the Cowboys, and Leonard Davis is about the biggest human being I've ever seen. And I find myself just mesmerized <laughs> watching him on film. I'm surprised he even saw what Jason Witten did on film based on listening to him. Because Leonard Davis is an awfully big man. 355 pounds. Here's a toss to Choice. To Shard Choice, another big run. Average five yards a carry his first two seasons in the NFL. He is over six yards a carry today. That's good for 26. Well, they're able to take advantage of the pursuit by Dwight Freeney. You're going to see him here up the field. And then you get him out flanked, and it works still because you're able to then get Jason Witten up on Justin Tyrone, the corner. And so, because Freeney's not staying with contain, he's trying to crash down on the ball carrier. And then with the block by Witten, you get the gain you got. 26 yard carry. Here's Felix Jones. Hesitates, takes it just inside the 10, picks up three. And so choice Troy has a 20 yard touchdown run now a 26 yarder and he is gassed over on the sideline. Uh, hey I think this guy's a player. I mean we talked about it there in the first half Joe when he's had his chances and he's had 10 carries or more in a game. This guy has averaged over the last three years over four yards a carry. He's done that again here this afternoon. I think he's earned the right to get a lot more carries than what we've seen from him this year. Here's Felix Jones. A yard shy of a first down. And right now the Dallas Cowboys are close to a 200 yard rushing day as a group. Last time they did that was week three of last year and the. Play selection 50 50 under Jason Garrett. At the start of the day and now today they are way more run heavy.
Well, I like that under Phillips and then under Garrett. Meanwhile, Jason Garrett's been calling the plays all season. <laughs> it's third and one. Felix Jones, first down. And how, how many times, Troy, do you and I talk to coaches around the NFL and it's boring and they all say it? We've got to run the ball, we've got to stop the run. And the Colts can't stop the run, and they have proven all day that they cannot run the ball. Well, that's right, and that's been a real problem for this Colts team, both offensively and then defensively as well. I mean, when you're able to take some of the pressure off of John Kitna by running the ball for over 200 yards, I mean, that's nice. We've seen how difficult the sledding's been for Peyton Manning. Choice came down short of the goal line. Got about half a yard. Brackett made the stop, second and goal. You know I'm impressed though Joe with this Dallas team you know for a team that comes into this game at three and eight and they just don't let up we've been watching them now for the last four games and they you would never know watching this team play that they're out of the playoffs. This is a spot where they would likely go for two if they score a touchdown the trail by one. That one's batted down. Knocked away by Keontae Dawson. It's third and goal. Yeah, he just gets his hand up, and Kidden is trying to look like he's trying to throw the fade route, but that was an awfully no, he had to slant there to, to Miles Austin, and Miles Austin certainly was open. So Keontae Dawson just saved a touchdown pass. If you're going to say you got a big, powerful offensive line, you run the ball right here. Choice doesn't get there. Angerer, the rookie, the first one there. Well, Martellus Bennett gets blown off the ball. You're going to see him here. He's got a block down, and he gets pressure. In the backfield, and then there's just nowhere for Tashar Choice to go. That is a great job defensively by Indianapolis when Dallas got first and goal from about the one yard line, and to keep them from scoring a touchdown and holding them here to a field goal. That's just an excellent job. This is less than an extra point distance wise, 19 yards for Beeler, but nothing's been automatic. That is. Penalty flag is down. They're going to have to make him re-kick. It's a delay of game, so that'll turn it into a 24-yard try. And I know you have to take the points. I know there's no decision when you've got fourth and goal from the one. You haven't been able to get in, but now you're going to kick a field goal and you're going to give the ball back to Peyton Manning, where you only need to get into field goal range with a guy like Vinatieri waiting on the sideline. You're three and eight. You're out of the race. I mean, I think you could. It's at least worth the discussion. Well, three and eight or eight and three. I think Jason Garrett is calling this to do what he d thinks will help him win the game. You have to take the points here and take the lead, but it certainly does change what Peyton Manning is thinking over on that Colts sideline. So a 24-yard try to regain the lead. Is down again. Let's see what the call is. Foster took a leap onto a teammate's back. And Jason Garrett, it's definitely against the Colts as they explain it to Jason Garrett. Here's the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 68. The defense. Leverage. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So now the Dallas Cowboys take the points off the board and have an automatic first down. And it was Eric Foster by using leverage 
guilty of the unsportsmanlike conduct. So the offense comes back onto the field for the Dallas Cowboys. It's first and goal again. Watch 68 there leaping on the back of Gerard. So there was no teammate, but he ends up on the back of Gerard. And that's the call to set up. Yeah, but I, don't, I, I think they missed one there, Joe. I don't know that that's necessarily illegal. I know you can't use your own player, your own teammate, to go up on somebody. Well, we have Mike Pereira to talk to, and we will get a clarification on this. But it's first and goal, according to this officiating crew. Choice knocked down by Lacey at the two. A gain of one at second and goal. That's a nice job there by Jacob Lacey. Mike Pereira is with us. What did you think of that call, Mike? That's leverage. Um, you know, it doesn't make a difference if you go onto a teammate or an opponent. You can't put a knee or a foot on top of an opponent or a teammate and extend for height. If you do extend, reach that hand up to try to block the kick. It's actually the classic definition of leverage. So there you go. The proper call made to give the Cowboys this golden opportunity down by one. Here's choice. Good job by this Colts defense. Muir the first one there. And now it's third and goal. Well, they're just beating Dallas off the line of scrimmage. You're right, Dan Muir, he just splits right through the offensive line there of the Cowboys. And, and again, he's in the backfield. We've seen it each time that Dallas has tried to run the ball. This defensive front for the Colts is just whipping this it Dallas Cowboys offensive timeout. front. And now a timeout is taken by Indianapolis. Jim Caldwell the head coach came running down to call the timeout and the leverage call could mean nothing more than just taking time off the clock if the Colts defense can not come up with a stop here on third and goal as it is 243 left and the Colts now have just one timeout remaining it seems at this point inevitable Barring something out of the ordinary that the Colts are going to find themselves trailing. The question is by how much. The day for Manning, the day for Kitna is thrown for 164 yards. Here we go. Well, they won't be running it here. Wide snap. Kitna, far side, Witten, touchdown. In front of Bethay. And a beautiful throw from John Kitna for the touchdown. Hey, just one on one on Antoine Bethay. And Bethay was actually in pretty good position at the snap of the ball. Just Jason Witten just outruns him to the sideline there in the flat route. A real simple job by Jason Witten coming off the line of scrimmage and then just racing to the flat. And John Kidna puts it on him for the touchdown. So now going for two are the Cowboys to try and make it a seven point game. Dallas Cowboys have converted one two point conversion this season and went to Witten. Kidna. Fires Roy Williams. Two points and a seven point lead. What a throw from John Kidna. He laid it out there perfectly, and Roy Williams caught it in stride. The Colts defense can't make a stop. Cowboys got another chance because of the penalty. Turn it in to eight points and lead by seven. Look at the numbers on that scoring drive. 18 plays. That's the longest scoring drive of the season for Dallas. 10 minutes off the clock. That's called playing keep away from Peyton Manning. And 14 of the 18 plays were running plays. And so even though it had been 347 games since the Colts had last blocked a punt for a touchdown, it gave them the lead. The Cowboys crammed it right down their throat for eight points and they lead by seven. Here's Tryon. 
can't make the 20. And a good play made by Danny McRae, a return of 19 yards. And here comes Peyton Manning, and it is all stacked up against Peyton Manning and the Colts on this drive and maybe for the season. Last time they missed the playoffs, 2001. If they lose today, they're a full game plus behind Jacksonville. Plus, because they've lost to Jacksonville head to head, they have them here in two weeks. Peyton Manning said to us, the wild card option is dead. We've got to win the division to get to the postseason. Quick throw broken up by Jenkins. Pass intended for Reggie Wayne. Let's go to Kurt Menefee for a game break. Tampa Bay intercepted Matt Ryan to set up this score. The running back Ernest Graham to John Gilmore on the trick play. 23-14 pending the extra point. Tampa trying to go up by 10 with 10 left. Joe Troy and Pan. That brings the number one seed in the NFC more into play. If that score stays, and now this one, a total miscommunication between Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne, and it's third and ten. Yeah, it's one thing when it happens with Blair White, but when there's a miscommunication with Reggie Wayne, these guys have been playing together for too long, but you can tell Peyton Manning thought that Reggie Wayne was going to stay up the sideline. Reggie Wayne hooks it up. And it's third and ten. Two downs to get 10 yards to keep their hopes alive. Manning scrambles and finds Wayne for a first down. Had to step up Peyton Manning, and he found Reggie Wayne for 18 yards. Yeah, he's having to navigate his own guy in the offensive line. You, know, you get pressure from the defensive front, but now he's starting to get pressure from his own players. And with 208 remaining, the clock is stopped because Sensabaugh can't get up. You think about the success with the Colts. This is the only team with 10 or more wins and a playoff berth every year since 2002. Eight straight years in the playoffs. 12 or more wins, seven straight years, and they won't make eight. That ends here in 2010, but a streak that started in 03. And yet here they are at six and five and staring at six and six without a rally here with 213 left. Well, I, I would say that even with some of his guys not here, you know, Dallas Clark, Anthony Gonzalez, Austin Cauley, Joseph Adai, I, we've seen it too many times from Peyton Manning, regardless of who's been on the field with them. I, I just don't know that you can bet against Peyton Manning in this situation. Based on his track record. I know it hasn't gone as well this year. We've seen him make some mistakes late in games just like this. We saw it against New England a few weeks ago. But for my money, I'd still put it on Peyton Manning. So now you've got Sensabaugh still hurt. Scandrick is out with a concussion. And a rookie safety, Barry Church, a free agent out of Toledo, has to come in the game. So they're thin back there, and that's. That's important against a guy like Manning, obviously. Yeah, and don't think that's lost on Peyton Manning. Manning slings it, passes, caught, what a catch. That's Reggie Wayne again for 13 yards. And we are at the two minute warning in Indianapolis. Here come the Colts. Down by seven, two to play in Indy. Peyton Manning, sixth time this season, 62nd time in his career, he's been 300 yards or better. But those are just stats. He needs seven points with two minutes left and one timeout. Manning over the middle hits Tammy. And the tight end picks up seven. Brady James on the tackle as we are under two minutes. Troy will circle that there's one timeout left. We will likely be getting you to bonus coverage from Tampa Bay, Florida. Here's a first down catch by Wayne as that game between the Falcons and the Bucks is tightened up. I think this is where Peyton Manning gets real dangerous because he's got plenty of time on the clock so he can be real patient and he can pressure a defense and just come underneath. As he does here with Reggie Wayne inside the 25. Sensible back in the lineup for the Cowboys a gain of 13. Sometimes the defense gets so focused on not giving up the big play in this situation that you can complete five yard passes and get all the way down the field with run after the catch. Manning steps up, hits Wayne, 
What a catch! Laid out and sets up first and goal. How great is that catch there? Unbelievable. He lays out right here, knowing that there's a potential there to take a big hit. That's just a great job by Reggie Wayne. He's been doing it for a long time. The Colts call a timeout. Wayne looked like he secured that catch going to the ground. Colts are out of timeouts. I think they're trying to let Reggie Wayne and others catch their breath. And I haven't seen a replay that shows anything other than a catch. Now they're going to take a look at it upstairs. It's a booth review with 57 seconds remaining. Here's the call. He may have already made it. Here's a call from Pete Morelli. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. So they have also given the timeout back to the Colts as it went to a booth review. And now Reggie Wayne for 194 yards on the day, two yards shy of a career high. They try and run it with Javaris James, who takes it maybe inches inside the two. Hatcher on the stop. It'll be second and goal. Again, one timeout left for the Colts. James again. Javaris James, they got the push, double team on the right side. He just takes it right over the center. And, you know, Peyton got him to the line in a hurry, and you knew that after that last run, they got good yardage. He wanted to come right back to the same play. He does, and it's enough for the touchdown. How about Javaris James? As we're now tied at 35. Just six carries, 18 yards, but two touchdowns made him count. Yeah, and how about the Dallas defense? I mean, think back to Thanksgiving night. The Cowboys have a four point lead. They fail to hang on to it. There was a lot of attention paid to the fumble by Roy Williams. Meanwhile, the defense let him go right down the field late to take the lead. They've got a lead in this game. Defense has to make a stop to preserve the victory, and they can't do it. Now, that, that, look, I'm sorry, Joe, but you look at this game right now 29 seconds on the clock, three timeouts. You know, with those timeouts, 29 seconds is a lot of time knowing that they just need a field goal to win this game. You know, I'll tell you this. That, to me, what you touched on with this defense for Dallas is as big a reason why Wade Phillips is without a job with the Dallas Cowboys as any. The mistakes, the lack of discipline, the lethargic play, a talented team underperforming, yes. But the defense took a nosedive from a year ago. I mean, this is the 23rd rated defense. They don't defend the pass well, and they weren't getting any turnovers prior to the coaching change. And it was the defense that this team was supposed to hang their hat on in 2010. Here's Brian McCann from inside the end zone. Loss of football. A fumble by McCann. Taj Smith knocked it out. But Dallas hangs on. How do you know? <laughs> Somebody at the bottom of that pile fought for the football. Now, Taj Smith already has a blocked punt for a touchdown. And in his first week active for the Colts this year, he almost changed the game and handed his team a win by forcing a fumble. But the Cowboys recover. And it was recovered by Miller. That's Lanye Miller, who was just added to the active roster of backup running back. 21 seconds left. And Dallas is just going to say, we'll take this thing into overtime. Despite three timeouts. With 21 seconds left, Jason Garrett will head to overtime for the first time. 
You know, and some may, yeah, some may look at that as very odd with three timeouts, and and you know, in certain circumstances, I think you'd but say, okay, hey, let's go play. see what we can do. But Jason Garrett is the head coach. He's got to make that decision based on where he thinks his team is at this time. He didn't feel good about it. We're going to regroup, and we're going to see what can happen here in overtime. So here are the overtime rules. The coin toss determines the possession. Remember, the rule change will take effect in the postseason, where if one team goes down and gets a field goal, the other team has a chance to answer. That won't happen in the regular season. 15 minute quarter you can have a tie two timeouts per team all replays from the booth How about Peyton Manning though. I mean he comes in he needs a touchdown to extend this game shorthanded and he delivers. How about Reggie Wayne. Oh it was that was it was a two man show. I mean it was we are Peyton Manning Reggie Wayne on that last drive first team to score wins if the game ends in a tie without any team scoring will be a tie. We will use fourth quarter timing rules each team will have two timeouts and all reviews will be upstairs from the booth. This is hit tails. This is heads. You're the visitor. You make the call tails. Tails is the call. Heads it is you won the toss. Indy won the toss. Brady James picked tails. It was heads. Colts will get it. It's overtime in Indianapolis. And a big one for the home team here this evening. If you're just joining us, here's what Peyton Manning and his six and five Colts have overcome today. Look at the scoring. Dallas led by 17 early in the second quarter, by 10 at the half, and by 13 points entering the fourth quarter. And Peyton Manning just took his team down with under three to play. Got him into the end zone after the Cowboys had scored a touchdown and then converted a two point conversion. And so now, here in overtime, the Colts will start at their 20. If you're just joining us, here's why it's important. Jacksonville won today over Tennessee. They're 7 and 5. Jacksonville has already defeated Indianapolis this season. They meet here in two weeks. And we quoted Peyton Manning earlier saying, forget the wild card. With the kind of records we have in our division, we have to win the division in order to avoid missing the playoffs for the first time since 2001. Manning, 342 yards. He's thrown three picks, two for touchdowns, and thrown two touchdown passes. On first down, here's Javaris James up the sideline. And all the momentum is with the Indianapolis Colts right now. Yeah, and here's what happens in an overtime situation is there's a tendency for viewers to think, okay, well, you play it just like you would, you know, any other series during the ball game. That's not true because this is still basically a two-minute situation, only you're not held up against the clock. You have plenty of time, but there's urgency on both sides of the ball. Usually when Peyton Manning's at his best, nice play out on the edge made by Sensiball on Reggie Wayne. That's right. So now you still have the, the sense of urgency by the defense, knowing they got to make a stop. Same thing with the offense. But now you're not rushed. And Peyton can still use the, the drop-offs, the underneath throws, like we saw there on that last possession to send this thing into overtime. Manning steps up. Pulls it underneath for Tammy, and he is hit by McCann, a gain of six. And so a third down coming here for the Colts, who have lost three of their last four. Well, and a third down, and, and a down that they've been good all season, and they've been really good here again today. Position to tie this game has one off his chest. Yeah, got up on his shoulder pads, and you see he's not able to get his hands up. 
And it, and it just goes right through his arms. We saw that last week against the Chargers. Peyton threw him a beautiful pass last week, and, and, and you just don't see it a lot from him. And that was a first down if he makes that play. Des Bryant left with an ankle injury. He has returned two punts for a touchdown this season. Brian McCann has one, and he's one of two guys back. He's the deepest. McAfee hits it, and it's a good high hanging punt. Fair catch. Called for by McCann at the 17. So here comes John Kitten. And if you're just joining us, this is the sixth straight start for Kitna taking place in place of the injured Tony Romo, who broke his collarbone at home against the Giants. And over the last five weeks coming in, Kitna number three in the NFL in passing yardage, behind Peyton and Mark Sanchez, number four in completion percentage, and he's had another strong game. Yeah, he has. He's been very efficient in this ball game. He's completed a high percentage of passes, hasn't thrown ball into, into danger. Felix Jones and a nice play made by Muir. In the backfield, Jones got it back to the line of scrimmage, lost half a yard, and Muir made the play. Well, I'll tell you, Dan Muir has. <laughs> He's had himself a game here in the latter half of this one. I mean, down there around the goal line and then coming right out here, first play in overtime, makes a play in the backfield. Here's Felix Jones. Play made by Hagler. Gain of just two. And now you get into that battle of field position as this Colts defense tries to make something happen. Well, this is when the big players step up, and Dwight Freeney had a nice bull rush on Doug Free right into the lap of John Kidna. I don't know if that's where he wanted to go with the ball, but it's where he had to throw it because he wasn't going to have any more time to hang on to it. Incomplete, but Freeney was held. Holding, number 68. Penalty will be declined. Fourth down. He went with the bull rush, two consecutive plays. Just jammed Doug Free right into the lap of Kitna. Kitna's able to get outside the pocket. Fortunate that ball wasn't intercepted. But what a disruptive force right there by that defensive front. First Muir, Muir on the first play of the series, and the last two possession or the last two plays there. By Dwight Freeney. Pass was incomplete, so they declined the penalty. Gary Brackett, who had missed the previous three games with a toe injury, was there to knock that pass away. McGuire hits it and hits a boomer. Wow. Blair White from back inside the 20. And when you have a punter who's having the season that McGuire is having, you can tilt it back your way with regard to that field position game. I'll give you a recap. Peyton Manning has thrown two picks for touchdowns, three overall. That one to Sean Lee, the other one to Scandrick. Taj Smith blocked a punt for a touchdown. That was a big call against Eric Foster. Leverage allowed the Cowboys to throw the touchdown to Witt. Two point conversion. That made it a seven point game, but then Javaris James just pounded it in. After Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne put on a clinic taking it down the field. This one is incomplete, not a lateral. James, the intended receiver, second and ten. I think Peyton thought he might have got him something there. Demarcus Ware was caught in coverage with Javaris James, the tailback, and, and did a good job of forcing Peyton to make an errant throw. Second down and 10. Pass is caught by Reggie Wayne. It's a catch. It's a gain of six. Third down coming up. Well, one thing we are seeing is a lot of contested throws, especially the ones being made to Reggie Wayne. Jenkins with a good coverage. And he's been right in Reggie Wayne's face all day. Third down. 
This one for Tammy is tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Lee. The rookie has his second. Jenkins tipped it, and Sean Lee, the rookie, picked it off. And it is the fourth interception thrown by Manning in this game. Yeah, and this time he didn't anticipate Michael Jenkins coming off of his man and getting underneath Jacob Tammy. You're going to see Tammy right here at tight end running the corner route, but Jenkins comes off of his man, Reggie Wayne, and then he's the one who got the hand on the ball. You see how he falls off of Wayne when he sees where Manning's going with the ball. And he tips it up for another interception to Sean Lee. So back to back four interception games for Peyton Manning. After throwing three the week before that. At New England. Here's Felix Jones. Cowboys are already inside field goal range. But remember they have a less than consistent kicker. In David Beeler they want to cram this down closer to make it easier. On number 18. Yeah, and, and, and let me just reiterate that that was a freelance play there by Michael Jenkins. It was a good play. I mean, when you're able to do that and read a quarterback when the ball's being thrown and come off of the man you're defending and make a play, it was a good job on his part. Second and seven. <laughs> Handoff, choice. A yard shy of a first down. Let's go for a quick game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. And the Atlanta Falcons have come back. Matt Ryan hooking up with Michael Jenkins. Nine yard score to give the Falcons the lead. 28-24 will take you to this key NFC matchup if your game is done before it is completed. Joe, Troy, and Pan. What a good game there. Good game here. Overtime third and one. Dallas. Handoff for a first down choice, and he's done it all day. Two big runs, one for a touchdown, and now a first down inside the 25 to the 24. Well, it was really good vision by Tashar Choice, just seeing where the weak spot was in that defense. It wasn't badly played there by Indianapolis up front. The, the Cowboys had been struggling to move any type of you know any type of yardage on the ground here in recent carries but pick up a key first down on that last carry by choice career high 96 yards for choice he gets it again and adds to it how about a quick update on Des Bryant? Here's Pam Oliver. Yeah, Joe, you mentioned Des Bryant had that ankle injury. Well, we just got more official word on it. Bryant with the ankle injury, it is actually a fracture. Back to you. So the rookie who has six receiving touchdowns, eight overall, fractures his ankle returning a kick. And his offensive teammates are trying to win this game, second and eight. Choice again. And Deshard Choice picks up two. And Choice now has the second 100 yard day for a Dallas Cowboy running back. And here comes Beeler into the game. Yeah, you saw Jason Garrett talking with special teams coordinator Joe D. Camillus, and that, that last carry was designed just to put the ball into the middle of the field, third down here, and go ahead and attempt the field goal. Box snap, you still have possession. So they'll try it on third down. It's a 38 yard try to win it. And a timeout is taken. So Jason Garrett, timeout taken by the Colts. Jason Garrett, who's 2 and 1 as interim head coach, talking to Hudson Howe, the longtime offensive line coach of the Cowboys and other stops, told us before the game of all the head coaches he's seen talk to a room full of players. Jason Garrett is number two all time to the great John Robinson who's actually here in the stadium today doing radio of this game and he thinks the world of the job Garrett has done for a team that looked like it had quit. They were a fumble away from starting three and oh under Garrett and now they're a field goal away from winning here on the road at Indianapolis. The change that we've seen from the Cowboys here over the last four games under Jason Garrett as the head coach doesn't just happen. So when I'm told that yeah 
Jason Garrett has been really remarkable in front of the team and very effective. It's not a surprise based on what we see of their performance on the field. 38 yard try to win it. Beeler. Cowboys win it in overtime. The Colts will leave here six and six and Jason Garrett all smiles will leave here three and one. Overall four and eight. But in this eight game audition to try and become the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys Jason Garrett is now three and one. He's won at the Giants at home against Detroit lost to New Orleans on Thanksgiving and wins at Indianapolis. Take a break and come back. Cowboys win it in overtime. More to come after this.